Hi, I'm Lisa. Let's bring real life into the English learning experience. In this video, we will continue our series of listening to native speakers in Los Angeles. You will listen to a conversation that I had with a native speaker. We will analyze all the different expressions that the native speaker was using. In addition, I will give you other example sentences so that you can learn to use that expression in other situations. That way, you will also be able to understand American TV shows and films. And when you have interactions with native speakers, not only will you be able to understand them, but you will be able to use some of the same expressions. I love this teaching method. I think it's one of the most effective ways to reach that final level of fluency. So in this video, we have a lot of different things to talk about. We will talk about the American accent, we will talk about grammar, and you will learn lots and lots of expressions. Okay, let's get started. You will listen to my conversation with Craig Gagan. Craig moved to Los Angeles three years ago from New York. He's a model and an actor. And before that, he played football. In fact, he even reached the professional level. And now he's using that same motivation and that same hard work to pursue a career in acting. There is so much competition in Los Angeles. There are so many actors from all over the United States and from all over the world. And there's lots of rejection. And I love Craig's attitude, how he deals with rejection and how he handles going on an audition. I was inspired by him, and I think you will be too. Let's watch the first clip, and then I will come back and teach you some expressions that he was using. It's tough, you know, first and foremost. It's definitely tough. It's a challenge, but it's fun. You know, it's, it's nice to wake up every morning and know that today's gonna be different than it was yesterday, and different than it's gonna be tomorrow. It's not a typical nine to five job, which I find really exciting. Craig said, it's tough. And you probably know what that means, right? It's tough, you know, first and foremost, it's definitely tough. It's tough means it's difficult. So you can say, my job is really tough. Or yesterday was a tough day. And Craig said, it's tough. First and foremost, it's tough. It's tough. You know, first and foremost, it's definitely tough. So the next expression is first and foremost. You know, first and foremost, it's definitely tough. First and foremost means most importantly, more than anything else, primarily. You can say, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my family. You can tell someone, if you want to improve your English, first and foremost, you need to improve your vocabulary. The next expression that Craig used was nine to five job. It's not a typical nine to five job, which I find really exciting. And that means a full time job, but it means it's kind of a boring job. You can say, I just have a nine to five job. Every day is the same. I'm not particularly excited about it, but also a nine to five job provides stability. And a lot of people want that. You can also say to someone, I know you love being a musician, but you really need a nine to five job to pay the bills. So a nine to five job is a regular job, a stable job, but maybe it's not so exciting. Now let's listen to Craig talk about how his experience in football is helping him with his acting in Los Angeles. And he will also talk about the audition process and what he does to make it less stressful. He talks about how he deals with rejection, and he also talks about the difference between acting and modeling. Let's listen to him, and then I will come back and I will teach you the expressions that he used. Football has made me who I am today. How so? All the hard work that I put into football from when I was seven up until a few years ago, I've just kind of taken that energy and refocused it elsewhere in my life. Now I'm acting, so I know what discipline and hard work is about, so it's helped me like that. And it also teaches you life lessons, football, believe it or not. You know, teamwork, um, accountability, and things like that. It definitely gives you an edge. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt about it. Rejection is huge in Hollywood. For every one yes, you'll probably get 150 no's. Wow. And it's something that you do have to deal with. 
I used to go into the audition room and leave and be really hopeful only to be cut down at the knees and let down. So I kind of took a different approach and now I'll leave the room. I'll be proud of the work that I put in, but I'll do the best I can to just get it out of my mind, focus on the next one. And if I get a phone call saying, hey, you got the part, then it's a pleasant surprise rather than, like I said, a letdown. Tell me about your modeling career. How is that different than acting? So there's obviously some crossover between acting and modeling. I prefer acting, of course, but I do do some modeling as well. It's fun and I fit the mold, so why not jump in and do that while I can? So between acting and modeling, acting is definitely more challenging. Modeling, they kind of book you for the job because you are in fact what they want or what they need for that specific job. Everybody has a good side or almost everybody anyway. I prefer this side of my face so I'll kind of always cheat that toward camera as much as I can uh -huh. unless of course the cameraman throws me under the bus and tells me to <laughs> face this way. Okay. So I'll kind of cheat toward camera with my right side best I can and you just want to look as relaxed and as cool for lack of a better term as you can. I like to kind of just lean into a hip, maybe one hand in the pocket, relax your shoulders, and just have fun. Okay. That's the most important thing is to have fun. Right. And that comes across probably too. Yeah. Well, my favorite thing about acting is that I get to do things on camera that I, Craig, wouldn't do in my day-to-day -day life. You know, I recently played the character of a gambling addict and he was going to the casinos in Vegas and he's got the girls on his shoulders and he's gambling and he's got all the drinks going and he's living it up partying like you wouldn't believe and that's not me you know I like to kind of lay low and just have a good time I'm not necessarily one who needs drinks or any other type of vice like that but it's fun to kind of put it on and do that for a few hours at a time and then just go back to being who you are naturally yeah. without there being repercussions of course that's what's the most fun part about it I guess my least favorite thing about acting is the fact that it's hurry up and wait mm -hmm. you know they rush you to get the set at 7 30 a.m. and then you won't even have anything to do until 4 in the afternoon you know it's just kind of always up in the air nobody ever really knows the schedule and even if they do it's hard to stick to it so it's a lot of downtime, but it's all, you know, a part of the game and I can't complain. And the pros definitely outweigh the cons for me. So I'm going to stick with it. I love it. How can people find out more about you? So people can find out more about me by following me on Instagram, which is at Craig Gagan 313. 313 is my birthday, March 13th. And that's spelled C-R-A-I-G-G-E-O-G-H-A-N-313. And that is my Instagram. Thanks so much, Craig. Thank you, guys. This was a lot of fun. Craig said, football has made me who I am today. And I asked, how so? Football has made me who I am today. How so? You can use the expression, how so, to mean, tell me more. Why do you say that? Please explain. In what way? How so? I've just kind of taken that energy and refocused it elsewhere in my life. Craig said elsewhere. He said he took the energy and refocused it elsewhere in life. And elsewhere simply means somewhere else or in another place. Elsewhere. Definitely gives you an edge. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt about it. I use the expression an edge. I said it definitely gives you an edge. And to have an edge is to have an advantage, to be in a better position than the competition. So the experience of his past, his football career, gives him an edge in Los Angeles as an actor. You can say his hard work gives him an edge on the competition. Another example is Michael Phelps' long arms definitely gave him an edge. The next expression is really common, no doubt. No doubt. That B is silent. Make sure you don't pronounce the B. Definitely gives you an edge. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt about it. No doubt. No doubt about it. And that means 
Certainly, that's true. He's the best athlete, no doubt about it. Craig used the expression to be let down, and that means to be disappointed. He said only to be cut down at the knees and to be let down. I used to go into the audition room and leave and be really hopeful only to be cut down at the knees and let down. Wow, that sounds pretty intense. You can say, for example, your parents will really be let down when they find out about what you did. And let down can also be used as a noun. In that case, we stress the first part. We say a letdown. Not getting accepted to the top university was a huge letdown for her. The next expression that Craig used was to put in. And he said, I'll be proud of the work that I put in. Now I'll leave the room. I'll be proud of the work that I put in. To put in means to make an effort to do something. You can say, I try to put in one hour of exercise every day. And I have a question for you. How much time and effort are you putting into practicing your English? And if I get a phone call saying, hey, you got the part? Craig used the word part. He said, you got the part. And that means you got the role, you got the job for the film, you got the part. You can say, that's a very difficult part to play. You're playing a lawyer in that film? That's a great part. Congratulations on getting the part. Tell me about your modeling career. How is that different than acting? So there's obviously some crossover between acting and modeling. Craig used the word crossover. There's definitely some crossover between acting and modeling, and that means they are similar. They have some things in common. It can be a combination of both. And the next one is a grammar point. Listen to the way Craig uses do two times. Tell me about your modeling career. How is that different than acting? So there's obviously some crossover between acting and modeling. I prefer acting, of course, but I do do some modeling as well. It's fun and I fit the mold, so why not jump in and do that while I can? Craig said, I do do some modeling as well. Why did he use do two times? Why didn't he just say, I do some modeling as well? What's the difference? We use that do for special emphasis or for clarification. You can say, I usually drink wine, but I do like beer as well. And let's change that to he. He usually drinks wine, but he does like beer as well. And past tense? He used to drink wine, but he did drink beer as well. So you see, we use the auxiliary form for special emphasis for clarification. And what does as well mean? Well, that simply means also or two. I prefer acting, of course, but I do do some modeling as well. You can say, I speak French, and the other person will say, oh, I speak French as well. Me too. Let's look at the next expression. Craig said, I fit the mold. It's fun, and I fit the mold. It's fun, and I fit the mold. To fit the mold means to be the type that they want, to have the characteristics that they are looking for. I asked Craig how he poses when he's modeling. Let's listen to his answer. Everybody has a good side, or almost everybody anyway. I prefer this side of my face, so I'll kind of always cheat that toward camera as much as I can. Uh -huh. Unless, of course, the cameraman throws me under the bus and tells me to <laughs> face this way. Okay. So I'll kind of cheat toward camera with my right side best I can. And you just want to look as relaxed and as cool, for lack of a better term. Craig used the expression to throw under the bus. Let's listen to how he used it. Unless, of course, the cameraman throws me under the bus and tells me to <laughs> face this way. To throw someone under the bus means to harm someone, to hurt someone in order for you to get what you want, to betray someone. You can say, I'm shocked that my colleague threw me under the bus. Or it was the manager's fault but I got thrown under the bus instead. And that's a very common expression. I've been hearing that one a lot, even more than before. And the next expression is, for lack of a better term. Let's listen to Craig. And you just want to look as relaxed and as cool, 
for lack of a better term, as you can. You can say, for lack of a better term, or for lack of a better word. And that means, that's the best word I can find right now. I can't think of a better word. Maybe a better word exists, but it's not coming to mind right now. You can say, he is, for lack of a better word, crazy. That's a good expression for you to know and use. The next expression is a phrasal verb, and I used that one, and it's to come across. That's the most important thing is to have fun. Right, and that comes across probably too. Yeah. Craig said, the most important thing is to have fun, and I said, and that comes across probably. And when something comes across, people notice it. It's noticeable. It comes across. You can also say, he comes across as a cold person. We use as, as a cold person, as a nice person. You can also say, when you first met me, how did I come across? And that means, what impression did you have of me? What did you think of me? What did you notice? Let's listen to two more expressions that Craig used. To get to and day-to-day -day life. Well, my favorite thing about acting is that I get to do things on camera that I, Craig, wouldn't do in my day-to-day -day life. If you watched my previous videos where I talked to people in Los Angeles, then you have already learned both of these expressions. People have used these in the past. They're very common expressions. To get to do something means to have the opportunity to do something. Craig said that as an actor, he gets to do things that he normally doesn't get to do in his day-to-day -day life. And what does day-to-day -day life mean? It means his ordinary life, his routine, his everyday life. Let's pronounce that correctly. Day-to-day -day life. Pay attention to what happened to the letter T in the word to. I didn't say day-to-day, -day, I said day-to-day. -day. You say it. Day-to-day. -day. Repeat after me. In my day-to-day -day life. Some people like to go to Las Vegas to escape their day-to-day -day lives. The next expression that Craig used is a phrasal verb, to live it up, and he said, living it up. Let's listen. And he's living it up, partying like you wouldn't believe. To live it up means to live an exciting life, to have a good time, to party, to not worry so much about the future, to live for today, and also, it might mean to just spend a lot of money and really enjoy it right now. You have a good time. You love socializing. You're living it up. Ever since he won the lottery, he's been living it up. He's very serious and careful about money, but his brother loves to live it up. And you can say, come on, have fun, live it up. And the next expression that Craig used is to lay low. Let's listen. You know, I like to kind of lay low and just have a good time. I'm not necessarily one who needs drinks or any other type of vice like that. And to lay low is almost the opposite of to live it up. People who like to lay low don't really like to live a crazy life. They like to relax or maybe they like to be in the background. They don't need to be the center of attention. Are you the type that generally prefers to live it up? Or do you generally prefer to lay low? You can say, for example, let's stay home and lay low tonight. Let's not go out. The next word is vice. Do you know that word? Let's listen to Craig. I'm not necessarily one who needs drinks or any other type of vice like that. Craig said drinks or any other type of vice. A vice is some kind of bad or destructive habit for example, gambling, alcohol, lying, stealing, cheating, those are vices. Okay, let's go to the next word. It's repercussions. Let's listen to Craig. But it's fun to kind of put it on and do that for a few hours at a time and then just go back to being who you are naturally. Without there being repercussions, of course. Without there being repercussions, of course. Craig said when he's acting, he can have a lot of vices without any repercussions. So what are repercussions? Repercussions are the negative consequences, the effects of something bad that you do. 
You can say to someone, I'm warning you, if you do that, there will be repercussions. You probably understood the next expression that Craig used, hurry up and wait. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I guess my least favorite thing about acting is the fact that it's hurry up and wait. Mm -hmm. You know, they rush you to get the set at 7.30 a.m. Craig said his least favorite thing about acting is that so often it's hurry up and wait. And that means sometimes people make you hurry and then when you arrive, you have to wait. People are not ready yet. You have to wait for something to happen or for someone to do something. That's very frustrating. He said, they rush to get you to set. And what does set mean? That's the location where they're filming. That's called a film set. I guess my least favorite thing about acting is the fact that it's hurry up and wait. Mm -hmm. You know, they rush you to get the set at 7.30 a.m. The next expression is a very common one, up in the air. It's just kind of always up in the air. Nobody ever really knows the schedule. He said, it's just kind of always up in the air. Nobody really knows the schedule. If something is up in the air, it's not decided. It's not certain. The schedule is not fixed. So nobody knows the exact schedule. It's up in the air. The decision hasn't been made yet. You can say, did you get the job? I don't know. It's still up in the air. Due to the coronavirus, our summer vacation plans are up in the air. The next expression is to stick to it. Nobody ever really knows the schedule. And even if they do, it's hard to stick to it. He said, and even if they know the schedule, it's hard to stick to it. What does stick to it mean? To stick to something means to do what you promised to do, to do what is planned. You don't change the plans. You stick to the plans. You can say, let's stick to our original schedule. Or, he decided to quit smoking. I hope he can stick to it. Would you like some dessert? No, thank you. I'm trying hard to stick to my diet. The next expression is downtime. So it's a lot of downtime, but it's all, you know, a part of the game and I can't complain. Craig said, it's a lot of downtime. And downtime means a period of inactivity, especially between jobs when you're doing nothing. You have a lot of downtime, a lot of free time. You can say, I'm working two jobs and I have zero downtime. Or, I'll call you when I get some downtime. The next expression is, it's part of the game. It's all, you know, a part of the game and I can't complain. He said, so it's a lot of downtime, but it's part of the game, so I can't complain. And part of the game means, it's part of the way things are done. That's the way it goes. That's the reality of the situation. That's how it works. So you can't be upset or surprised about it. For example, you can say, if you want to play the stock market, risk is part of the game. The next expression is a really common one, the pros and cons. The pros definitely outweigh the cons for me. So I'm going to stick with it. I love it. He said the pros definitely outweigh the cons. Let's first pronounce pros and cons. The O in pros is like this, O, pros, pros. But the O in cons is very different. You open your mouth and say, ah, cons. Let's say that, the pros and cons. Let's say that as one unit, the pros and cons. The pros and cons means the good parts and the bad parts the positives and the negatives. Reasons for something and against something. You can say, what are the pros and cons of living in New York? And by the way, what are the pros and cons of living in your city? Let me know. And Craig said the pros definitely outweigh the cons. There are a lot more pros than cons. The pros outweigh the cons. We can use outweigh like this. I'm not going to do it. The risks outweigh the benefits. So what Craig is trying to say is there are so many more benefits to being an actor than negative aspects. The pros definitely outweigh the cons for me. So I'm going to stick with it. I love it. So because the pros outweigh the cons, Craig said he's going to stick with it. And to stick with it is the same as to stick to it. 
He's not going to stop. He's going to continue doing it because he really likes it. And I hope that you stick with learning English and I hope that you stick with watching these videos. The next video will be part two of my interview with Craig. In that video, he will talk about the New York accent that he used to have and he needed to change it a little bit in order to come to Los Angeles and get jobs in films. And he will give examples of what that New York accent sounds like. It's pretty interesting. We will also learn a lot more expressions. Craig used so many wonderful expressions. I hope you subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so yet and click on the notification bell so that you find out when the next video is released. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To learn all of the rules for a good American accent, you can buy my online video courses at accurateenglish.com.